show you is how I mix my salt wash um, it, to make my uh, texture medium for my raised stencil. I also want to tell you that I'm not one of those people that looks really super cute um, when I make a video, and so henceforth that's why my head's cut off. Um, so what I have in my bowl here is um, some little, this is DIY paint, I'm using Debbie's Design Diary, DIY, Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint um, in little black dress. And I'm going to put, I used one tablespoon, and then I'm going to put like a half a scoop of salt wash in there. And I'm going to mix it. Now I already had some in my bowl, I'm just mixing up a little bit more. And then, and there's, so there's no, um, I just eyeball this. When I mixed up my first batch, I used two tablespoons of paint and just about one full scoop. And the scoop comes with the salt wash. Um, there's the salt wash. Um, I used just the scoop that comes with the salt wash. And so I used two tablespoons of paint, one scoop of the salt wash, and mixed it all up. And it was perfect. So I'm kind of, I don't need that much more, I just need a little bit more, so I'm going to see if this will get me there. And you want to make sure that it's definitely good and combined. So you want to mix it, mix it, mix it, stir it, stir it, stir it. Don't mind me that I'm going to totally wipe my um, fingers on my pants. This is probably just a tiny bit thick, but I think I'm going to go with it. So traditionally, I have used salt wash. Not, um, I don't always use it as a texture medium. I use it to, um, for what it's supposed to be used for, which is to give that kind of salty sea spray kind of look. Um, but. It actually works as a texture medium too. And what I like about it as a texture medium is that I can tint it and it holds color pretty well. Plus, I'm using DIY paint, which is very heavily pigmented paint. Um, and so the combination of salt wash taking color very well and my DIY paint, which has a lot of pigment in it, um, I'm off to the races. It's a great combination. Okay. Now that I have my texture medium all mixed up, so again, I use my salt wash, I use my DIY paint and little black dress. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I have my offset spatula. I love this thing. This thing comes in handy. I am going to use a little bit of um, painter's tape. Let's get my drawer. And I've got my stencil. This is from uh, the Stencil Studio. Um, what I like about Stencil Studio, as actually a lot of the studio uh, stencil companies do this, but you can get the same stencil, but in two different sizes. And so this is a smaller size, so it's the same thing, it's just scaled up, and so it's bigger. So this little one actually fit on three of my drawers perfectly and then the bigger one is going to be for the last drawer because the last drawer is just a little bit bigger than these other ones. So I already did a middle section. You have to have patience when you do raised stenciling because you have to wait for one section to completely dry before you do your next stenciling section because otherwise you're putting your stencil down and your medium is still wet and you're squishing it and that's no good. So it just takes some patience. You have to have a little bit of patience with it. I'm just lightly taping this down so it doesn't move around. You could use a stencil adhesive, a spray adhesive where you just um, spray the back of your stencil and then it kind of sticks down, very low tack, it just sticks down. Um, I don't because, I don't, sometimes I don't even um, tape. It's just I like to live life on the edge. So then what I do is I take a little bit of my um, my medium and put it on the back side of my offset spatula there and I just start applying. And I just kind of scrape it over the stencil. And 
I generally work from one side to the other. I'm actually going to take, oh, nuts, nuts, right, right. That's what I get for trying to take that tape off. It's okay. The beauty of this finish is that um, it totally doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to put another color over the top of this and distress it anyway, so it's going to be a-okay. That's what I get for thinking I was all special and cool and taking my tape off. I don't need the tape. Look, I can, I can do this without the tape. Right, right. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm just pushing that medium that I created through the stencil, pulling off any extra stuff as I go along. All right, so this one might look like a hot mess since I accidentally moved that stencil, but let's see what it looks like. Let's just see. Moment of truth. Oh, not bad at all, actually. No, it's totally fine. Um, and we're great, and we're golden. So, again, I have to, I can't, I can't move on to the next section because if I put this down, this is what's going to happen, see, because this is all super wet. So if I put this down, I'm just going to squish what I just did. So unfortunately, I have to wait. Okay, so I've got my drawer. Got it all, all finished. It's a little messy on the sides there. It's totally okay because we're going to um, continue on with the next step and you'll never see that. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take some um, DIY white swan. And I'm going to just put that over the whole entire thing and cover all of this. Um, I did not sand my stencil, my raised stencil yet, so it's a little bit rough. Um, that's okay, because I'm going to sand it once I, the white swan is on and dry. Um, you could give it a little light sanding before you do this and then do a wet distress. Um, but if you're using DIY, if you wet distress, you're going to kind of reactivate that paint a little bit and you'll get more of a um, little bit of a blended coloring. Um, I have done that before with this technique. Uh, I did it with a blue, it was a bunch of different blues and white swan as my top color. Um, and so it gave me kind of a more blended look than than just a straight up um, kind of two color distress. <laughs> if that's not really what I'm trying to say, but um, so I didn't sand this. So I'm going to do the white swan, let it all dry. It'll probably need two coats, and then I will sand it. And what that will do is bring out all of the um, texture that I have on there, it'll bring, it'll bring out all of that little black dress, um, and it'll also smooth out, um, it'll also smooth, that. see now, oh, there you can see it there. So we'll be able to bring all that black back out when we sand, and it'll also smooth out all of that texture. Anytime you're using a stencil and a texture medium, you definitely want to sand at some point, whether you do that before you put the next color on or if you're just doing a raised stencil and you're leaving it and you're not putting another color on top, you definitely want to sand that because otherwise it's rough and it doesn't feel good. Um, so you definitely want to make sure you give them a, a sand, just a little bit of a light sanding, just to smooth things out. So I ended up with two coats of White Swan over my uh, raised stencil and I did that so that I could get full coverage and then go ahead and distress it and because it's white too and so I always feel like white with a single coat always just looks like white with a single coat and not mm, not like it's supposed to look so two coats of white swan the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to distress through 
and I'm going to use my 220 grit, just a piece of 220 grit sandpaper. And you can be kind of aggressive with this. You don't have to have a light touch. And what I want to do is, if you remember, we did the, um, the ray stencil in a black. And so now my intention is to bring that all through and at the same time softening up um, that ray stencil that is a little bit chunky because we didn't sand it before. So I'm just going to start going at it. You can see I'm starting to get some of that stencil to come through. And you can bring it through as much or as little as you want. I kind of want to bring mine through a lot um, because I want this to look like old tile when we're done. I really, I really want to bring most of that. I really want to bring most of that black gray stencil out. I continue to sand, wiping away the dust with an old paintbrush, and you can really start to see the raised stencil design popping through the paint. So obviously I still need to sand in here, and I still need to sand over here, but you can kind of see how that's really starting to come through there. And some more sanding and some more taking care of the dust with my old paintbrush, but it's worth it in the end, I promise. So the reason I'm using 220, I suppose I could use 120, but I really wanna be in control, right? So the reason I'm using 220 is I'd rather make multiple passes over this and get it the way I want it than going at it with a heavier grit sandpaper and take the risk of taking too much off, if that makes sense. Whoa, love that. So it's totally imperfect. I got, it's a little lighter in some places than others and it's exactly the way I want it. Yeah. Here's another little pro tip for you. So when I do a drawer, I don't tape the back side of the drawer. So I wind up getting a little bit of paint that pools right in here and I get this little ridge or this little lip. I take a scraper and I go ahead and I scrape that paint off just gently. And I go ahead and I just scrape that lip right there. even just give this a little bit of a light sand on the back side just so I clean up that inner edge it's just nice when you have a piece of painted furniture that those little details like that are taken care of so that when somebody opens the drawer they don't have that you don't have that roll of paint right there because that's just yucky okay so we're all sanded and I'm ready to go to the next step so this is my secret weapon. I like to use Annie Sloan Crucular. It is a two step. Step one, step two. You're gonna put on step one first, let it dry, then we're gonna do step two. What I like about the Crucular is this is crackle, it's a crackle varnish, and this is going to be, um, it, yep. There we go, okay. What I like about this is it's a crackle varnish, which means, it goes on top of, it works together, step one and step two, and is used as a finish over your paint, if that makes sense. So sometimes, like I have used crackle mediums, which um, go in between paint layers, and they are part of the finish. This is, or part of the paint process, this is, um, this is a finishing technique. So it goes on top of your already existing paint job and it works together. So it doesn't affect the paint any. It's actually sealing your paint and the varnish 
is cracking itself. If that makes any sense whatsoever. So it allows me to do a decorative finish like this and then I seal it with the crackle varnish and get cool crackles. So I am going to just apply step one. Step one is pretty thin. It's a, it's a very liquidy um, consistency to it. Step two is not. Step two is like a paste. And you'll see what I mean when we put it on. So you have to do step one first. Let's just make sure I get that front part up here. Because I'm going to go ahead and crackle the whole face of the drawer. Okay. Don't want any pooling there. Okay. And now I'm just going to let this dry. So now we are on to crackler step two. So I applied crackler step one, totally let it all dry. And you can't really, other than it being shiny and intensifying the, um, the color, it really you, nothing has happened yet. Um, the magic is step two. So crackler step two. Um, it's a lot thicker than step one is. You can kind of see that. Uh, uh, got big glare. Um, it's a lot thicker than step one is. So I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to randomly brush it on, which you can't see that. Mm -hmm. So you can go in random different directions. You do not need to go in a single direction with this. I like to do random so I get nice random crackles. Again, this is, um, it's like everything else that I do, I just like it to be totally uh, organic and natural and whatever happens, what happens, I'm not in total control. I mean, I kind of am because I, I kind of am because I know what I'm doing <laughs> and I know what my outcome is going to be. I continue to apply Crackler Step 2 in random brush strokes all over the entire piece making sure it is all covered. Once I am finished with the application, I will let it dry following the directions that are on the can. Okay, so the final step after our Step 2 of Crackler is dry um, is to get some wax on this. And the reason that I'm using wax on it is because wax is going to get down into all of the crackles that you can't see right now. I'm sure you can't see them, even if I get close. I don't think you can see that there's crackles in there. And it just looks like, oh no, the crackler didn't work. I can assure you that it did. Um, so I'm going to take some, I'm just using, I'm using DIY wax. Right there. Blah. I'm using DIY wax in black. Uh, you could use the dark wax, which is brown, and I suppose if you were doing a dark color with crackler, you could use the white wax, and that would be cool too. So I'm just going to start getting my black wax on my drawer front. And you will notice it darkens up the drawer a lot. And I know it just kind of looks like I've made a huge mess and I've totally ruined my project, but I can assure you that I haven't. 
Um, I do not have to put clear wax on first, and I don't want to put clear wax on first. I don't have to really worry about staining my paint so much because that crackle varnish um, has done that for me. That has already sealed my paint. So DIY is a porous paint because it's clay based. Usually when I use dark wax, I use a clear wax first when I'm just doing straight onto the paint. But because the crackle varnish seals my paint, I don't have to worry about using clear wax first. So I'm just gonna go straight on with my black wax. I'm just getting the edge over here. Make sure to get all of it. And I'm using a brush to really work it in because I want to make sure I'm working that wax in the, uh, the crackles that I have created. Get my down here. Get my sides. Get the top of my drawer up here, which you can't really see. Okay. After I have done that, I'm going to take a lint-free cloth. You can see I've already been wiping one of the drawers. Are you ready? And I'm just going to wipe that wax back. Flipping my cloth as needed. lip there okay all right so you can see that my drawer is still it's pretty gray and it's pretty dingy but you can see all of the crackles that are in there now that you couldn't see before so here's where the magic really happens though and I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a clean cloth and I'm gonna take some clear wax and I'm gonna put a little bit of clear wax on my cloth like so, get a little clear wax on there. And now I'm gonna go over my drawer again, and I'm gonna go over it in the clear. And what I'm doing right there, can you see the difference? Is I'm taking off any of that black wax that's kind of just sitting on top of that varnish, and it's leaving it where it, where it is down in the crackles that I've created. So it's a kind of a difference, you can see it. Here, it's still kind of gray and dingy. Here, I'm kind of getting some of that white back. Now it's not gonna make it pristine white uh, again like it was. It's still going to be a little bit grayed out and a little bit darker. That's okay. But now I can really... Oh yeah, see right there? See how nice that looks right there? Now I can really see those crackles. Once I get that clear wax on over the top, I really can see those crackles. And then to me... That totally looks like old tile. And the nice thing about it is because we use that crackle varnish, is it feels like old tile as well. It has this really super nice feel to it. I'm just cleaning all that up. Like that. So I still have this to do. You can see the difference. I still have this area here to do, but there's a big difference from here to here. So that is it, my friends. That is how to get a cracked, mm, crazed china, old tile kind of finish. Um, I still have to finish up my dresser that this goes to. I just waxed the base and put a top coat on the top and I bought new hardware from D. Lawless Hardware that will go on the drawers. So I'm just waiting for that to come in. Okay, so I'll get some of my pretty pictures and we are all set. Thanks! Mm -hmm.